Well, hi, this is Custom Works, and I'm Clint Allen. And in today's Tech Talk, we're going to be talking about not firing the parts cannon when you get a click on your ignition trying to start your 7.3. Anybody who that's new here, go ahead, join the family. Down in the description, I've made it really easy. All of our playlists are right down there. All of the sensors that are on a 7.3, learn what they do, the basics on how to test them, our injector series, our ever so controversial debunking videos, hot no start videos, our hands-on videos, and I can go on and on and on. We built so far a heck of a collection and we're not even close to being finished. In the shop this week, we had a truck show up, had an individual who got into his truck one morning and hit the old ignition and just got a click, 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 click. So what does he do? He immediately runs out, gets himself a new starter, installs the starter, click, click, click. <laughs> Runs back to the store, gets two brand new batteries, installs the batteries, gets them all put in while well, we got new battery, new starter, click, 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 truck won't start, ends up by me. So I'll get to what the cause of the problem is, but let me hit down on some things here first. When you have that situation, first thing we want to do is just let's diagnose this before we just start throwing money away. Check the batteries. Uh, in our previous videos we've shown this. Just take a normal 12 volt tester, disconnect the passenger side battery. Doesn't make a difference if you got the truck or the van. Disconnect the passenger side battery and test that see if you get anything north of 12 volts. Go and test the other battery, see if you get anything north of 12 volts. Um, for the vans where they're underneath on the passenger door, just do the test where you disconnected from the passenger side the connector. That right there will tell you if that battery is good also. Uh, preferably you're looking for 12.6 13.2 in that area, but anything north of 12 volts. So now we know the battery is good. Go ahead, clean them up. Get yourself one of those battery post cleaners. Uh, it's got the brush for cleaning up the posts and uh, also for cleaning up the connectors. Get that all handled. Next, inspect the power wire that leads from that battery on the passenger side that goes down to the starter. Make sure that it's not French fried. Go down, check the starter, make sure that the connector, uh, which this is a common problem over the years, the age of the trucks, 20, 30 years old, it basically French fries the connection. Make sure that's all good. Clean up your connections on the starter, both for the engagement and the power. Go back in, see if it still clicks, or if it fires off, then you had nothing more than a bad connection. No money, no money, you know, out of the pocket. So, simple, this does happen. Uh, you have a fusible link on the older models, uh, 98 uh, production year before the, the new 99. Uh, there, there's a fusible link right at the relay. You're gonna make sure that that's providing power and you can do that with your 12 volt tester, ground it out, put it to where that connection is on the relay. You got power there, you know your fusible link is good. Um, and don't forget, we have got, do not make what model year you've got. You've got a fuse for the starter and you've got a relay for the starter. Um, Mid-years have a fuse inside and outside and a relay. So 
because there's so many variations, go to the old Google machine and pull yours up specifically and find out where, which ones they are, what numbers they are. Make sure that those are good. Uh, next on the list, uh, neutral safety switch, whether it would be for automatic or for the manual. Make sure that with an automatic, if she won't start in park, see if it'll start in neutral. If, if it's burnt out, usually it'll start in neutral. On the manual transmissions right there, you can just pop it off, clean the connectors, make sure that when you're pushing the clutch in and out that you haven't busted that switch right there. It'll be real obvious. You kind of pull it apart and it'll basically fall apart in your hands. Uh, next on that list is going to be the solenoid. Just the older models, the 98 again and backward. Uh, just jump with a screwdriver or pliers, make sure it's in park, make sure it's in neutral for manual. Just jump it straight there. If it, if it starts up right there, then we know that basically everything forward of that is all good. Uh, if you have low batteries, you know, test your alternator. Um, but let's go back to the situation here of what actually was the cause of the problem. On all Ford OBS or new style 94 through 2003, you will have this right here. This right here is your ignition switch. What this does inside of here is basically a sliding switch that when you turn your key, it'll pull it up into auxiliary, into the on position, and then finally to the start position, and it kicks back to, then to the running on position. This was the problem right here. And this is a very low cost part, and it's not a finicky part. Normally, I always say go get Ford OEM replacement parts. This one here makes no difference. There, there's just very minimal way that anybody can screw this switch up. So all you have to do is pull your panel off down here, and that'll give you access. You don't even have to remove this. The, you know, of course, this is from the other truck here that I disassembled, but. This will be on right here. You can get it right at the screws. So this is a bolt right here, which is a number seven. And you basically unscrew this. That'll come apart. Then this right here is a T30. And we got a runner. So it is basically as simple as this right here. So when you go to install this, right here is going to be your off position. That right there is your auxiliary. That's when you turn your key back. Here's the off position again. There's the run position. And then finally, this is the start position. It'll push all the way forward. And it'll jump back into the run position. So when you go to install it, make sure that you pull it back all the way. Give it one click forward. Go back. Install it in just the way that I removed it, put the plug in, run down the internal holding bolt snug. We're not trying to hold a bumper onto a truck or uh, rim onto lugs. Just get her in there snug, a little bit of a turn, you're good. Otherwise, it's plastic, you'll break it. Go back in and bam, she'll fire right off. So... I hope you've learned something today, and you take it easy, and you have a good day.
you're still here yet? It's over. Oh, I know. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell. You know the little bell? I'll let you know every time that I post a new video. Also, don't forget, down in the description is going to be our full playlist. Don't miss out on that. Until then, go home. Get a sudsy treat. Nice hot coffee. Whatever you want. Just get out of here. <laughs> no, really. Go. Go.